If you want to pump your body and expand your mind, there's only one place to go. Mind Pump. Mind Pump. With your hosts, Sal Stefano, Adam Schaefer, and Justin Andrews. In this episode of Mind Pump, we talk about Adam's multi-level marketing encounter at the grocery store. Did he get closed? Find out in this episode. We talk about my day at Refuge, one of our favorite spas, and uh, rituals surrounding death in uh, societies. That's all in the intro. Then we get into the questions. We answer the question, lightweight versus heavyweight for women who have the goal to lose weight and look lean. Which one is better? Which one's superior? Then we talk about the best way to work out when dealing with low testosterone. If you're a man with low testosterone, there is a way you should work out that will help that particular situation. We give our opinion on Dr. Oz. Uh, he's mm-hmm. one of our favorite sham artists Shuckster. on TV. And lastly, things get a little personal. We talk about uh, <laughs> whether or not me and Adam <laughs> resent Justin for not prioritizing his they physique. They should. They really should. At least that's what the question says. Yeah. Uh, I still think he's the sexiest person. Yeah, be, uh, be resentful. Also, uh, one day left. This Is it the last day? Is it What's going on here? Is this the last day? One day Bogo! left? Go! For the buy one, get one free promotion, if you enroll in the MAPS Super Bundle, which includes uh, all of the MAPS programs, it's a year's worth of exercise programming, enroll in that, and we'll give you another one for free for anybody you want, friend, family member, spouse, doesn't matter who, they will get their own program um, Super Bundle for free. The place to get it all is mindpumpmedia.com. And we got some shirts to give away. Shirts. So we only got nine reviews this last week, so I think we need to call for reviews again. Maybe tell people how to leave a review. That'd be a good idea. That's the problem. So here's what you got to do. You get on your phone, you, you, you tap on the podcast icon, uh, then you need to search for Mind Pump. Even if you're subscribed to Mind Pump, you have to search for Mind Pump. After you search for Mind Pump, click on the icon, and then there will be a section that you can click on to leave a review. And we get anywhere between nine to 20 a week and we give out like three, four shirts, your odds of winning a shirt are actually pretty high. So leave us a review and we'll pick the best ones. This week we're giving away three shirts. Three shirts. They're going out to Rachel Jamie, Skylar B557, Danny Williams Fitness. You all are winners. So send the name, the one I just read, to iTunes at mindpumpmedia.com, your shirt size, your shipping address, and we'll get that right out to you. So I'm in uh, Whole Foods yesterday. And uh, Katrina and I are shopping around and this couple walks up to me out of nowhere. Young couple, probably mid 20s or so. Um, Good looking fit, shopping around Whole Foods in the vegetable area, walks over to me, makes comment on my shoes. He goes, hey, those are dope shoes. I like those. I was like, oh man, thanks, right? And uh, normally when we go grocery shopping, I'm like a typical male, like, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know what I'm, I don't do anything there. I just push the cart. You know, that's really? Like, yeah. That's, that's, is it? Don't act like that's not your job. At the oh no, I'm the, I'm the shopper. Oh, you're the shopper. I've always been the shopper. Oh wow, really? always. I love grocery shopping. Fucking love it. It's one of my favorite oh, things to do. Wow. I used to until I had kids. I can't stand it. No, I love it, man. I, I love go crazy. I love taking the foods, looking at the labels, analyzing them. Which one do I want? Which I love it. It's my favorite thing to do. In fact, I volunteer to do it. All well, the time. I've taught my girl how to to do all that, so she gets that. So she knows like the the rules of like what we eat and what we don't eat. Like, no, 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 we can't eat. You give food. her the guidelines. <laughs> yeah, she has her guidelines. But so basically, I push the cart. So, anyways, she's off uh, getting something right cilantro or whatever and i'm over there and the guy comes over and he says that to me strikes up conversation and so i start talking to them and he's complimenting the shoes and he asked me like oh you look like a guy that works out you know do you recommend uh you know adidas or nike or you know i said well actually i wear my converse my chucks or i go barefoot if i'm in my own facility he's like what and then he so he got me explain this he gets me talking right and uh, the first bit of it, I don't see it coming yet because I realized that uh, I actually just thought he really liked my shoes. I'm wearing my new EQTs and I get compliments on them all the time now. So What's EQT? EQT? It's the Adidas shoe that I'm wearing right now. What does EQT oh. stand for? Anyone know? Just a brand, right? Oh, it's just okay, a, so he's Equate. he's coming over oh. and he's Equitous. complimenting it, right? And he's talking to me, and he and then Katrina comes walking Equif. over, <laughs> and we're we're having this dialogue back and forth, and. I realize about, I don't know, maybe five minutes into this conversation that, oh, I think this is, I think I'm going to get pitched here. 
here comes an MLM. Oh, but it no. took, you could just yeah. smell it in the I, air. But it took me a while. Mm. And the, the kid was good, right? And what made me like, so he's asking me all these questions. Oh, you're not, oh, I, I, I uh, do podcasting, this and that. And he goes, he goes, oh, I listen to podcasts. Oh, what kind of podcasts do you listen to? He's like, oh, I love entrepreneur stuff. Like we're entrepreneurs. You know, I love entrepreneurship. Oh, very cool, right? And he's trying to get me to ask him, right? By like, asking, what does he do? Yeah, yeah, right. But so, you're not. I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> and so he's like, and he, and he did a really good job of like circling around by asking me a bunch of questions and he keeps asking and Katrina comes over and the guy and girl are talking uh, and she goes, uh, they've been married for 10 months and he makes this, uh, this comment about being retired within a year. They're like 20 something years old. He's like, you know, oh yeah, my wife and I, we plan to retire in a year. And that was the 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 big like ask me what oh I God, ask me my how. eyes almost spin in my right? head that's a hard roll. <laughs> and so I love Katrina because Katrina Katrina sees right through it too like she put it together right away, and she's like oh so he look she, he looks at the wife and he goes what do you what do you do right now she goes oh oh um I'm a receptionist and he and then she looks at him and goes well what what do you do and he goes well I used to be uh I used to clean homes. And he says, I used to, right? To, to see if she'll answer. She totally doesn't say anything to him about that. And r- at, at that moment was when I kind of cut the conversation off. And you could see this look on his face like he wanted to ask the the big MLM question. And we took off and we left. We walk out of the grocery store. And at this point, Katrina and I hadn't said anything to each other. So we just were kind of vibing off of each other. And then we walk out of the grocery store. And I look over at her and I said, you knew it was coming next, right? And she goes, oh, yeah, that was obviously MLM, right? I go, yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> so she had picked up on it. I had picked up on it. But these, the, I watched this couple. So they never actually told you? No, they couldn't get to it. Dude, what if, what if, what if you missed like a crazy opportunity? What if like he invented <laughs> like this crazy tech? He's like, uh, actually, I invented uh, artificial intelligence and uh, you're a nice guy. I was actually going to have you. Yeah, you're going to be an <laughs> early adopter. I was going to give you, like, you millions you and away. of dollars. Yeah. You're like MLM. <laughs> yeah. I was going to give you shares because you have nice shoes. <laughs> you're going right? to be diamond <laughs> platinum <laughs> level right from the I gates. actually own social yeah. media. I reached 50 million people. I was going to promote your podcast. That was the first time away. though that has wow. happened to me in a grocery store like that. I thought, and I watched. aggressive. It was. I watched him do that to other people after. Oh no. Yeah. I watched him walk up and make, make strike up conversation. I always, I shouldn't say this on the podcast. Yeah, I'm not going to. Yeah, I'll say it. Now I have to, now <laughs> I have too, to say it. It's too late. You're committed. I, I have a rule where Open I always, I try to always listen to people's pitches. Uh, you know why? I Be, can't anymore. I know. I know it sucks. <laughs> Every time it sucks. But I always try to listen because you never know what you're going to hear. Hmm. You know what I mean? It could be. Well, I used it could to. Be something it depends cool. on how long it is. Yeah, I mean, that's what like, she yeah, said. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Totally. I used to when I was looking for salespeople. So I I do have a habit of entertaining someone like that because I want. Well, there's to, also that, right? There's I want also to see, the. I want to see how talented they yeah, are. I'm exactly. Like, okay, yeah. like this like, ooh, this young guy pulled yeah. me out of a grocery store, got me to stop in my tracks to talk to him for ten minutes. Like, okay, I'm interested to see where this goes. I want to see how well of a job he does, but mm-hmm. I don't give a shit about that anymore because yeah. I don't hire people anymore. So <laughs> when I used to hire sales employees, like that was a different different. Do you know story. what I used to do yeah. when when people would try to sell me things? It didn't matter where it was if they were bad. I would coach them. Oh, so would I. <laughs> all the time. Like, here's all the time. Here's that, what you need. Yeah, exactly what I would. The old me would have stuck around, let him pitch me, and then told him what he did wrong. Yeah. yeah. Like, hey, that was a good job. The way you first got me going and talking to me about this, and then you went that way. But then you started fumbling I around a little that. bit, yeah. and the idea of telling me that you're going to retire in a year, ah, bro, that's a that's a pretty far. I remember fact. this guy coming in and he was trying to sell me something, and he was like only accepting cash, and I was just like, you know, like they're square. Right. And like, you know, if you're going to go in front of all these people, like nobody carries cash anymore. You know, you might want to like adjust your, your approach with this. And he's just like, what was, oh, he trying to sell that. what was he trying to sell you? I don't even remember, dude. Oh. It was some kind of membership for some kind of magazine or something. And he like, only accepted cash. Yeah. I was yeah. like, that sounds like legit. that is such a hustle. I was <laughs> right. like, yeah. yeah. I'm Anyways. pretty sure that was real. Do you know that? The, for sure. Do you know? So this is crazy. When I, uh, God, I was only 23, somewhere around there. Mm-hmm. I had a client and she was like uh, VP for Knight Ritter, which was the people who oh, yeah, produced big building in San Jose. Yeah, yeah, San Jose Mercury News, right? So that's who did the news. And she actually created a position. I, at that time, I had my cousin who was living with me who was between jobs, needed a job, and she totally hooked him up, created a position for him basically as a favor to me to help him out because he was renting a room for me. And I thought that was really rad of her to do that. And- what he what she had him do 
was they had this issue. So the, the, the newspaper, and you guys have all had this happen to you, I'm sure, before, where you remember, and it was really popular like 10, 15 years ago, where someone would knock on your door and try and convince you to subscribe to the newspaper. Mm-hmm. Well, the, the San Jose Mercury News and most magazines contract that work out to companies that are like sales companies that have a team of you know door-to-door, door-to-door salesmen that they've trained up to do this, and the company hires them, pays them a commission for all the contracts that they get people to sign up for for these newspapers. Well, what had happened is they had built a really bad reputation on the tactics that they use to get people to buy these magazines or subscribe to these magazines. So she created a position for my cousin. His job was to go in, pretend like he was working for this company to find out how they were training oh, wow. their employees. So and then report back to her. Oh, so he was a mole. Yes. Wow, that's cool. Right? And he was a secret agent. Yes, he was. And they totally t- would teach him so they would say, okay, if you go, go up there, they would give them like fake stories, like, oh, your mom's dying of cancer. And, oh my God. Yes. And they would, they would, they would tell him that when you go up there, you know, if people like try and blow you off, say, hey, you know, use that, use that angle like that, that, oh, you know, I'm, I'm struggling. I can't get by. And this is what's going on with my mom or my family or my sister or my wife, whatever. So they would give them these stories to lie to people, to make people feel bad that, look, it's only, Jeez. you know, $9 a month and you can have the newspaper and you really help me out by doing that. And so they would teach them to do the, do these tactics. Was, dirty. Yeah, really dirty. And that's happened to me before. I don't know if you guys ever had that, but I've had some kid who actually has come to sell me a newspaper and he has actually just handed me a script where he, and he supposedly was mute Oh, and has this whole <laughs> thing. Hilarious. Like, yes. And he has, and, and I'm like, Oh, sorry. You know, I don't, you don't know what the newspaper wow. type of deal. Right. So th- I've seen it. It's happened to me firsthand. And I didn't know that until, until that situation. Isn't that crazy? Gee, say one word and I'll buy a magazine. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. Dude, you know where I went this weekend? Bye. Finally. Where? Refuge. Oh, you did go. I did go this weekend. Man, I'm jealous. I'm the only one who's gone yet. So, and I'm almost like I don't even. I, I almost contemplated not even talking about it on the podcast because that would suck if that place got too popular. Because it's awesome. Yeah, <laughs> right. Because it's not yeah. popular. <laughs> First off, I mean, it's so it's it's like a big. It's a, secret it's a big spa, but uh, and a lot of it's outdoor. But they have all these, you know, jacuzzis and then cold dips and freezing dips and sauna and steam room. Mm-hmm. The sauna is the hottest sauna I've ever been in. It fuck it's fire when you get in there and then there's like five levels so you could sit at the very top and really sweat your dick off Mm -hmm. then when you get out what i wanted to do is i wanted to jump into the cold dip and so they have these signs over the 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 cold and hot dips or whatever and they'll have like little symbols that tell you how cold it is so for the cold dip you know one snowflake is it's cold like more than one is it's freezing so i found the coldest one how long were, now? How long were you able to stay in there? Oh, now? dude, only seconds. I was probably in there for thirty seconds. Thirty? Yeah, that's a long time. Yeah, and I actually dunked, which dude. most people would like. They walk in, walk out. Of no, it. no, no. Yeah. I went in. I went completely under. Yeah, so did I. It was so cold. It was painful. Like mm-hmm. it hurt. Like it tingled everything and got whole. And then when you come out, you're so invigorated. It's amazing. So I had. I, part of me, I have to admit that I was motivated though because one of the workers there saw me going in it. And like you could tell, it like the the people that work there, when they see people get in that one, they're like, "Oh, this dude's legit." Because not hardly anybody goes in the fucking freezing, freezing. Cold what is water. it like? Forty degrees? I don't know what it was, but it's fucking freezing. It's super there may as well cold. be like ice cubes in it, right? So oh. he he came over to me and he told me that there's a, a ex Navy SEAL guy who you know shows up there all the time, and he'll go and he'll sit at the bottom and hold his breath for like two minutes under Oh my gosh. So he gets he he sinks to the bottom of that and he holds his breath for like two minutes under I under. could I did uh I think fi- I did it a bunch of times. I did a bunch of cycles and I think I did t- fifteen seconds maybe Matt I mean that's it's so cold that like Yeah it's cold. That when you're ready to get out you get the fuck out. Like yeah. I'm I'm jumping <laughs> out like ah yeah. and it's it hurts. It hurts your body but it's really invigorating. How it's much incredible. did you love that layout? I wish I had something like that, dude. Dude, accessible. That it, it was too. It's far. And that sucks. It's like an hour or something, you know, drive or whatever. I know. It's a. It's a. It's a trip, right? You have to make a whole day out of it or whatever. Oh dude, man, I, lo- I, I wish we had something. Like I was that. there for like th- three and a half hours. Did you guys massage too, or just use the? No, amenities? man. I didn't want. No, I don't want to massage. I just wanted to go in there and uh, just do just do cycles of all that, and then we would go, and then there's these, these relaxed rooms where you go in and you you know you you can read or whatever. So when mm-hmm. they're reading and. Mm-hmm. 
It was a good time. It's silent though. You're not allowed to talk, hmm. so nobody's talking. Yeah, in the whole place. If the only you time go- I've done that I was at Ben Greenfield's house. We went in the uh, the the sauna, and then the cold plunge, and oh, then yeah. right after the cold plunge, we went into the hot tub. And that was pretty crazy. That was your first experience doing something like that? Just this recent? Like all in a row. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, I've always well, done them separate. How so. cold? His is like 40-something degrees. Too. I mean, it was, yeah, it wasn't actually as cold as that. Yeah, it was It was cold. Like, it wasn't, when we went into the river, that was way colder, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know what temperature that was, but that was like, take your breath away, like a uh, panic mode kind of cold. Oh, you know? yeah. Makes so. your, your dick go inside out. Oh, yeah. I had no dick. Shrinks everything. Yeah. <laughs> it's gone. It's terrible. Yeah. So what'd you guys do this weekend? Uh, what did I do this weekend? And what do we have going on? Oh, I had a I had a funeral, man. Oh, I had a my horrible, best terrible. my best friend's um, wife father. So his father in law uh, just passed away. I mean, he was on his last limb for quite some time. Mm. The shitty part was he was uh, th- they were overseas traveling and they got the news while they were traveling mm. and so they came back. Kind of put a damper, obviously, on his trip. They came back. Now she is uh, Mong. And uh, if you're not familiar with Hmong, Hmong were the people that housed uh, the Americans in, in Vietnam. during the Vietnam mm-hmm. War. And so they were totally outcasted from Vietnam. Mm-hmm. Like so, And then we, we housed them over here. And I believe um, Merced, Sacramento, that area like that, there's a, there's a, a large population of them over there. And she, uh, their, 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 part of their culture, when someone passes like that, it's like a week-long thing. So we, a week long and Saturday and Sunday, we went by to pay our respects on, on Saturday, but it literally is a, from six, 7 AM in the morning, all the way till 10 PM at night, back to back days wow. of just ceremony. It you know, what's interesting, you know, what's interesting to me about, about, um, all these, uh, ceremonies and stuff that we surround uh, around death, because I actually had this, uh, this discussion with someone a long time ago, like, why do we have so much, so many rituals around death? Like every culture has rituals and every culture spends most of them spend a couple days uh, of like ritual to kind of you know the morning process or whatever and I thought about it, like why do we do so much around death like why don't we just like bury them and then we're off or whatever and I think it the reason why it's stuck around so long is probably because it helps the morning process you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying like if you're if you're someone who lost somebody very close it's it's probably helpful to have like a five day or four day or whatever or week long mm-hmm. process where you show up and then you see all these family members and friends kind of support you each day. You know what I mean? So you can feel their support. So it is interesting though. Every culture's got something yeah. like that. You right? acknowledge it. You work through it. You know, you have a community there to kind of support you in that. And every it looks different, like in every culture. You know, there's some people that really celebrate it and you know make a party out of it and. You know, it's it's interesting to see like the different contrasts of cultures how they deal That's with death. A, well, it, in my in Sicily, the when you die, they keep you in the house for I forgot how long. Oh, really? Yeah, they keep your wow. body in the house for I want to say a week. I'm probably wrong. Oh but shit, that's probably long. Uh, I don't probably, know. I, they, they keep long. They keep the body there, and people visit the home, and then they do the process of the rosary and the and the funeral. Hmm. So it's very we, interesting. When, when Katrina's dad passed, we kept him in the house for a while, a while after, but I'm talking like hours, not like days. Later. There, no, this is, they do something He'd like pass days. in the morning and we kept him there all day pretty much. Hmm. And everybody kind of- People like, show up and do yeah, their thing. Yeah, yeah, everybody. You know what though? I, I want like, I want it to be like a fucking party, dude. Like yeah. I want everyone to get together and like celebrate my life, like mm. not mourn over me. Like I want it to be anybody and everybody that I impact them, hopefully positively in their life- Show up, fucking have a drink on, you know, have a drink in in my memory type of deal. We'll have a DJ. shots off of you. Yeah. We'll have a DJ. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, seriously, I really want that. I really, I don't want, I yeah. don't want like a Strippers. bunch of people. Yeah. People are showing up like, oh my god, is that is that cocaine? They're like, no, that's his ashes. Don't do. Oh my god, <laughs> it's not that kind of party. <laughs> We're not trying to snort at him. Seriously, <laughs> everybody do a line yeah. of that. I want a big ass party, bro. Uh, I want a big party. Man. A big party when yeah. you die. So if I go before not you guys, me, man. I when I when I die, I want like everyone. I want everybody to fucking cry like i want to i want it to be just (laughs) horribly the most impactful person ever okay that's how bad that's how like strong my ego is like when when i'm a spirit i'm gonna watch him like wow i feel your tears look how sad everyone is remember when you're a teenager and you're all like pissed off and depressed because you're a teenager and you ever have those fantasies like well if i just died people would be so sad would miss me (laughs) they'd be so sad if i died my parents would be so so important they cry so hard yeah (laughs) (laughs) so stupid yeah yeah. Bring the bird on, Doug. Queen Cole. The angle has landed. 
Chimera Quad! Today's Quad is being brought to you by Chimera Coffee. It's the only coffee that is infused with all natural nootropics for a cleaner, calmer, and more focused buzz without the crash. Click the Chimera link at mindpumpmedia.com and input the discount code MINDPUMP at checkout for 10% off! It's the motherfucking Quad! The eagle has landed! Our first question is from Divania27 is asking about lightweight versus heavyweight for women who have the goal to lose weight and look lean. Can we skip this question and just go straight to number four? No, 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 no. We got to wait, dude. No, fuck you. We got to wait. We got to address this right now. Don't ruin the whole episode. You can't skip around. No, if we get this out of the way, then everything else will flow nicely. I think it's (laughs) it's a misstep by putting it at the end. We have to (laughs) follow. Well, he already asked the question. I got to answer the question already, Justin. Sorry. Whatever. <laughs> so, well, the, here's this, this is good. Actually, what you did is good, Justin. What you just did is a, <laughs> you, it's a you, it's like a retention yeah. gimmick. That you now just everybody did. has everyone's to wait gonna listen in anticipation. Yeah, till the very end. So, yep. Uh, so lightweight versus heavyweight. I think the appropriate way to ask this question would be uh, high reps versus low reps, because um, that's really what's important. Lightweight, heavyweight. It's all relative. Like, what do you mean by by light and heavyweight? Uh, depending on the exercise that you're doing and the tension. Uh, that you're creating with the exercise, um, your body doesn't know how much weight you're lifting. It just knows how much tension is being created. So, uh, but as far as uh, the goal of losing weight, weights do one thing very, very well. They build muscle and build strength. Higher reps and lower reps both do this. And if you get stuck in one of them for too long, your body will stop seeing results. So the answer to this is both, is you want to be able to do both, um, but you want to probably phase them so that you're not necessarily doing both in the same week or the same workout. In other words, you know, focus on a two to four week cycle of heavyweight and low reps where that's your focus. Your focus gets stronger within this, you know, this five rep range, uh, you know, with weight. And then after that, maybe move into a higher rep range where it's maybe around 10 to 12. And then you could do that phase for a little while and then maybe even a higher one after that. And all all along the way, you'll see the body progress and you'll speed up your metabolism or at least your body will uh, burn more calories because its goal now, its adaptation signal is to build muscle. Um, And in terms of weight loss, it's one of the best things you could do is increase your body's caloric burn. Now, that being said, no doubt for sure of all the women that I have trained in 15 plus years, uh, getting them to lift heavy ass weight has impacted them positively more than anything else. So I know that's a generic answer. And like Sal said, we would, we would move in and out phase that I wouldn't just lift heavy weight, Mm. but most women have stayed away from lifting heavy weight and low repetitions for so long in fear. Because that's of, what's been marketed to them. Forever. Yes. Like high it, reps, low weight. Yes. They, so for so long, they've been lifting lightweight, lots of repetitions and high intensity and sweating like crazy in their workouts that the lifting six reps or less even and heavy weight mm. is such a different adaptation for their body that it responds incredibly. And it's it's part of the reason why we when in in Maps Red it was created, why Sal made it a uh low rep range heavyweight the first phase. Cause he knew right out the gates that first of all, we know that, you know, 65, 65 plus percent of the people that purchase maps is gonna be women. And it's it's north of that, so m- more than half of our our audience is women, and we knew that most women don't lift heavy weight. So we knew if we come out, if he came out with a a phase right out the gates that is focused on an adaptation, a majority of people are going to respond very well right away. And the only women that I would say wouldn't respond extremely well are ones that are already power lifters. Or Olympic lifters, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I mean, those. If there's Which any, which is a small percentage of the, uh, you know, the, uh, of the population, and part it's part of the reason why people get such, in such quick initial results is because they're switching into a phase that they're not, they never trained in, and again, like Adam's saying, in particular, women, women typically don't train there because they believe that that's going to make them big and bulky. When in reality, again, muscles just grow or shrink. They don't do anything else. There isn't a difference between building muscle one way versus building muscle another way and how it's going to look. 
uh, they either build or they shrink and phasing your workouts is going to give you better results. If you are one of those women, by the way, they're extremely rare. I think I've only run into one in my entire life where they do build muscle so easily where we'd have to kind of scale it back. You still want to get there the fastest way possible. In other words, if you're trying to get results, why not get results the fastest way possible, the most effective way possible, which is the the best way to build muscle. When you get to that point where you look in the mirror and you're like, oh, this is as toned as I want to get, or this is as muscular as I want to get, then you can scale it back and scale back the well, intensity. And now let's dive a little bit into the psychological part, why most clients that I've helped with this struggle with this is let's pretend we're we're starting off a program and you say, hey, you know, Mind Pump says this, or I just bought my MAPS program, and you start in phase one, and it's heavy lifting, low reps, and your goal is to tone, and I'm doing air quotes right now, is to tone up. I love is how to, you say that too. Tone. Is to tone. You know, hey. to, I'm to tone. This made up word, right? So you're, you're trying to le- lose body fat and build muscles, what you're trying to do, right? So- that person starts off and maybe their diet isn't all the way in check and they're eating in a little bit of a surplus and all of a sudden they put on two or three pounds, like initially right out the gates a week or two in a training. And what happens is most of those people bail on the programming because they're like, oh my God, I did not sign up to get bigger. I don't want to get bigger. And they freak out and they go away. When in reality, it's probably awesome. They probably put on two pounds of muscle that their body is responding so well to this new adaptation they're not used to. And in fact, they're probably in a much better position as far as their metabolism is concerned, but because they're so caught up in the scale and maybe how they look in the mirror, like, oh my God, I look bigger or, oh my God, the scale is showing me three pounds heavier and they bail on the lifting the heavy weights and they say, oh, there, no way, heavy weights just isn't good for me. Or how many times have you guys heard this from a female like, oh, I, I don't lift heavy weights because I just get big so easy. I, I just blow up as soon as I touch yeah. weights. No, you don't. Yeah, no, that's what they think. They think that, but what's happening is they're building muscle and they're probably also eating in a surplus where- And they're, and they're overweight. Usually it's overweight people right. that say that and- uh, fat takes up a lot more space on a pound per pound basis compared as compared to muscle. It's just muscle is far more dense. So if you have body fat on you um, or you gain body fat, it's gonna, you're going to get a lot bigger than if you just gain muscle. So even if you gain two pounds of muscle, you're probably not going to look bigger. You'll feel tighter. You'll def- that's where the word tone came from. You'll feel it, uh, but you're not going to look any bigger. The other thing too to consider is the intrinsic tension you can create with weights to make them feel heavier. I think that's an important thing to cover. I know, Justin, you're big on that, Yeah. you know, in creating tension. Maybe you can talk a little bit about how, you know, that can make something light feel heavy. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's all about the intent uh, and, you know, what you're trying to accomplish uh, with range of motion. I've, I've actually done this with a lot of people. Once you start really articulating, like, where to uh, control the weight and where to hold your joints in the right angles, and um, it, it completely takes a different form for the exercise. And um, a lot of times I'll remove weights and, and we'll just use uh, body weight techniques or we'll use stuff with a stick, which I'll use as well. But um, there's a lot of different ways for you to connect and, and intensify uh, these types of movements intrinsically, which I feel like is a misstep uh, from a lot of people where they're not really in control of their body like they think they're. They're reacting to this weight that they're they're trying to move. And so if you haven't really took the time to control the weight, uh, it's a, it's, it really is a transformative experience for people mm. because now they, they can actually, um, you know, start with the loading sequence and, and, and improve upon their training with, uh, that being the next focus. But the, the initial focus is, can I even move and control this weight with the proper mechanics? And I feel like there's just so many people that just bypass that step. And, you know, here's the other thing you want to also consider, um, cause when you talk about lightweight, we should also cover, super lightweight type exercises like we found and they were more popular back in the day although I do still see a lot of Instagram posts like this where you know girls were promote you know where you're doing like these little you know leg kickbacks and you're doing you know 50 reps or 100 reps and you know you just want to feel the burn and you're doing it like one exercise for like you know for three minutes you know during the whole video or whatever here's something you want to understand when it comes to your muscle yes you are working your muscle with those super super light but super high rep movements. You are, but you're training an adaptation that doesn't really require your muscle fibers to change their appearance. So what I mean by that, if your motivation 
is to change the with one of your motivations is to change the way your body looks. You want to just just it's just smart to target the muscle fibers or at least the adaptation that has the biggest propensity for changing the way it looks, and that's strength. Endurance, not so much. When you're training for endurance, which is what this really lightweight, high rep stuff will, will train for, your muscle fibers don't need to get bigger. They just need to become more efficient at getting rid of waste and utilizing energy. So if you're doing a lot of these super high rep sets, visually speaking, you're not going to get that much change. You're going to get much more endurance. So now you can do you know, 100, 200 reps of standing body weight squats, but your legs and your butt and whatever aren't going to look that much different. Now, on the flip side, if I'm training for strength and I'm training in the lower rep ranges, and when I say lower, I mean anywhere between one rep to, let's say, 15 or 20 reps, which I consider all within that muscle building range, but different, you know, different, still different adaptations, but still muscle building. When you're training in there, what you're doing is you're asking for an adaptation that requires muscle fibers to actually grow. So you're going to cause visible change in your body. This is why you can see endurance athletes and whatever, you know, doing all these exercises, all these movements, and they still don't look, some of them are lean because they burn so many calories and don't eat much, but they don't have muscle development. If you lift weights for strength, you're going to see muscle development. So Mm -hmm. again, if you're lifting weights to change the way your body looks and to become not more efficient with calories, but less efficient, because that's what happens when you build muscle, you burn more calories, then you want to focus on strength. So the heavier weight... (laughs) That whole general category of heavier weight is where you want to focus your your attention when you're in the gym. Well, a lot of people don't understand uh, exactly what's going on or what we're doing when we're building muscle and how that plays a role in your metabolism and how important all this is and and changing these adaptations. And a simple analogy that I, I like to give to to people that they, I think they they misunderstand is let's take. Let's take two clients and let's say everything is exactly the same. Okay, same age, same everything, same goal. Um, you know, and we'll just use round numbers that are easy for people to to follow. Is they're both two hundred pound women. They both hire me and they say, Adam, I want to get toned and lean. I want to look ripped. I look. I want to look. I want to lose body fat. I want to drop thirty pounds of fat off of me and look lean and toned. So both that's their goal. Both of them are eating when they meet me fifteen hundred calories. Let's say, and so. One client, I say, okay, we're going to do things the right way. I'm going to help you out. And our goal right now, I know you want to lose weight. I know you want to drop body fat, but I actually want to help you build a metabolism that's going to help you sustain this long term. So that client, I take off and I say, okay, for you, I'm going to have you slowly increase your caloric intake. I'm going to have you lift heavy ass weight. And this is what we're going to do for the next four weeks. At the end of that month, this client looks at me and she's 202 pounds. She's heavier than when she hired me four weeks ago. But on the flip side, she is consuming 2,400 calories a day now. Now you have the other client who tells me, Adam, I want to get, I don't care what it takes, do whatever we need to do to lose this weight as fast as we possibly can, even if it goes against all your beliefs on how you want to train and how you tell me I need to work. I don't give a shit about that. Just let's lose this weight. And I say, okay, you're at 1,500 calories right now. Let's throw in some cardio. Let's do lots of, lots of repetitions, lightweight. Let's cut your calories to about 1,300 calories. Month goes by. I'm doing this with this lady. She has lost. 12 pounds. She's down 12 pounds. She's eating 1300 calories. Now, which one of those clients is happy with me and which one should be happy with me and what right. in that scenario? Right. Client A, who's actually gained 2 pounds, who's consuming 2400 calories. So she gained weight even though she hired me to lose weight, is in a much better position than the girl who's eating 1300 calories, doing all kinds of light repetitions and all, and has lost 12 pounds. And that's because of what we've done for her metabolism and what's going on. Because yeah, let's fast forward six months, a year, two years later, uh, and see the difference between the two of them. Yeah, and people don't understand that. They don't. They what they see is the scale, or they may think they're the bigger. Scale. Right, and what they but they don't realize what's really going on with that that body is you have built a much healthier metabolism and body that is going to look better down the road. But we because we took the right path. The other person who's ecstatic because she's like, yeah, I'm almost halfway to my goal, but she's starving. She's eating 1,300 calories, which is not sustainable for long term, and she's doing all kinds of high repetitions in cardio. That is not sustainable. That person's probably doing 
So understanding that while you're going through this process, I think is so important. I think that's a lot of times why people stray away or are scared of the the heavy weight in the in this process. Quick commercial break. Hey, people ask us all the time how they can support Mind Pump. Here's what you can do. Uh, you can go to www.brain.fm forward slash mind pump and get 20% off Brain FM for meditation or focus. You can also go to audibletrial.com forward slash mind pump and get a 30 day trial plus one free audio book. Lastly, you can go to getnatureblend.com forward slash mind pump and you will get a discount on Ben Greenfield's CBD product. Travis Hayden 14. What's the best way to work out when dealing with low testosterone? This is actually a good question because this is becoming more and more prevalent uh, today with men. We've actually touched upon this in some previous episodes, some older episodes, but we've noticed a trend now um, in medicine where general testosterone levels in young men have been declining now since we've been testing them for the past you know, four or five decades. Mm. So there's something going on. And uh, men's like a like a thirty year old's testosterone level now is significantly lower than what a thirty year old would have tested in the nineteen seventies, uh, for example. So, which we speculated from there's a lot of factors that could play into this. There's a lot from, of, there's, from our food quality to the addiction to pornography and the and accessibility to it to well, it could be it could be xenoestrogens or chemicals uh, that we now are exposed to that have estrogenic properties, lack of activity, changes in diet, so. We're not quite sure what's causing this, but this is becoming more common. Now, one of the most effective things you could do Lift to weights. to raise your testosterone levels to a healthy level is properly is to train properly, uh, lift weights properly. The reason why your body's testosterone levels usually, not always, but usually will go up or become optimized with weight training, with proper weight training, is because you are asking your body to adapt in a way that it requires more testosterone. So if you're lifting weights uh, in a way that is really effective and your body's trying to build muscle, one of the first things it'll do, or what it'll do as it's trying to build muscle, is it'll raise its natural testosterone levels to, to raise that signal so that you can adapt better to this to whatever stimulus yeah, you're you doing. You have to create that environment for you to have to overcome that. So like your your hormone levels will adjust based off of what you're telling your body you need. And mm -hmm. so that's that's just that's part of the environment that you can control and you can contribute towards, you know, raising testosterone whether it's also eating like, you know, what are you eating? What what are you contributing towards uh, you know, your your hormone levels and and making that balanced and optimal. Mm. Well, as far as resistance training is concerned, if you have low testosterone, your focus should be uh, to maximize strength and muscle growth and nothing else. That being said, you also there's a fine line of overdoing it too, I believe. Oh, oh, a hundred percent. That's what I was going to get into. So I think that's where I think that's where some some guys go wrong. Here is they've got these low testosterone levels. They hear somewhere that hey, lifting weights is great for it, and so in their heads they think more is better. And in this case, if you hammer the body, beast mode, no days off type of mentality, You'll lower your testosterone. you will most certainly lower it. It'll get worse. In fact, uh, that's one of the signs of overtraining is lowered uh, testosterone levels. So depends on the individual, but I would typically recommend, no joke, someone genuinely has lower testosterone. First off, if you're under the, you know, outside of the range that we get, and the range is pretty big, by the way, but if you're outside that range, you should probably go see a doctor, number one. But if you're on the lower end of the range, so you're still considered, you know, normal, but it's low, um, I recommend, and I've worked with lots of people like this, I recommend two, three day, two to three days a week of weight training, and that's it, max. You're in the gym doing a full body routine, two to three days a week. Your focus is on the big compound lifts, squat, deadlift, overhead press, bench press, row, like all these big movements and you're and you're not training to failure because we're not trying to hammer the body too hard. You're stopping about a couple reps short. Your goal is to get stronger in the gym uh, with these exercises. And as you get stronger and as you build muscle, your testosterone levels uh, should go up and you should feel good after each workout. You should not feel exhausted. As far as nutrition is concerned, uh, you need to eat adequate fat. Uh, saturated fat, believe it or not in particular, 
is been connected to uh, better testosterone levels. So has uh, dietary cholesterol. So what do you what do you think about this? This is something that I've recently kind of paid attention to more so than ever in my life, and I find it very fascinating. And I know this is anecdotal, but I want to hear what you, your thoughts are. Now, being somebody who controls their testosterone levels through synthetics, right? So I take testosterone injections. And, you know, a, a normal testosterone dose for me is every 14 days or so, 250 milligrams of testosterone. So about 100, 125 milligrams a week of testosterone. And I have gone up and down. Like when I was competing, I got as high as 500 milligrams in a week before. It was the highest I ever reached. And nothing impacted my sex drive more than uh, my stress levels. Mm. I I could I would notice there'd be times I was on the lowest amount of dose of testosterone, but I had a really good balance of meditation and things were going really good with work and you know Katrina and I maybe just traveled and had a trip and just I felt really really good and I could feel my sex drive it's it's it would be through the roof and then there'd be other times where I'm taking double the amount of testosterone synthetically but my my sex drive was in the crapper and when I when I started to notice um, started to connect the dots I started to realize whoa what I what I realized was more of it had to do with my stress than actually the testosterone that I was taking, and I found that really fascinating. Do you think there's any weight to that? Oh, 100%. Testosterone is just one, it's one signal that can signal your libido to increase. There's many signals, so like self-esteem or so, or so uh, body image. Like if you feel you look horrible, you have poor body image issues, That'll lower uh, libido. Uh, that's actually quite common with women in particular. Where they're, if they're not feeling sexy, they could have all the fucking hormones in the world uh, that are beneficial for sex drive. They're just not going to have a high libido. Uh, you, it, so there's lots and lots of factors that affect libido. And uh, stress is just one of them. The right kind of stress will increase testosterone. Uh, well, excuse me, will increase sex drive. So I'll give you an example of this. They've actually done studies on this. Well, where if they have a, 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 a guy and a girl that are dating, if they encounter a dangerous situation, let's say they almost crash or they get held at gunpoint and then they survive or whatever, sex drive b- b- goes to the roof immediately afterwards. Uh, yeah. This is why taking a girl to a, a scary movie- It's this a is smart play. One of the reasons why yeah. that tends to be a smart play because that excitement and then the relief of safety actually triggers this this uh, this- horny effect uh, oh. if you will pro tip right yeah. there next first date pull a gun yeah. on your chick let's yeah, go <laughs> skydiving yeah <laughs> pull a gun oh my god no, i recommend it you went that you went that direction yeah that's yeah. good all right i like that next question is from johnny dumbbells johnny dumbbells. hey it's, yeah, it's johnny, dumbbells. johnny dumbbells again what are your thoughts on people like dr oz <laughs> like, oh, I like I, people like huh uh, in quotations, I, right? I think that this is great. We just did a uh, recently released a response to Joe Rogan's episode where he had some uh, what's Sci Sci Babe mm-hmm. or whatever her name was, mm-hmm. who was a, a, a chemist or scientist or I don't know who the fuck she was, but you know, a lot of times people like this. Now, Doctor Oz is he's an actual doctor, oh, right? Yeah. So he yep. he has his PhD, mm-hmm. right? But what happens is you become like a super specialist in an area, right? Or in your field, whatever that may be. And I don't even know what Dr. Oz is. Do you know what his uh, actual specialty is? He's like a brain surgeon. Uh, or he's a legit, I mean, uh, very, he's very like intelligent. An MD, guy. he's not yeah. a PhD. But, yeah. he's, but he has peddled some serious bullshit. Well, this yeah. is what happens, right? So what ends up happening, and this is the why I'm not the a green coffee, the, doc, the doctor name in front. Pedal. Right away, we, we give all this like clout to that. Like, oh, they're a doctor, so they must. No, but I mean, you can be a you can be a doctor in one field and know very little yeah, about it. You can an- be very brilliant and you're very specialized in that one thing, and and then now all of a sudden you're you're broadcasting all this other information that I'm like, wait a minute, whoa, whoa, whoa. I don't know that you know you're very versed in nutrition, for instance. Well, and that's the and that was the one that really help me connect these dots because i i'll be the first to admit i felt the same way too like i figured oh this guy's a doctor he must know this especially if he's my medical doctor he must know about food and what i should be eating and diet and things like that and the more i encountered more of these mds okay, i a started, cardiovascular surgeon oh there he's, a, oh, he's yeah. a cardiovascular surgeon okay yep. so when you when you when you know that you know that he's he's hyper specialized in that area 
they don't have to do very much schooling at all for something like nutrition. So when you get someone like Dr. Oz, who I know puts out a lot of nutritional advice and information, you got to be fucking careful. You're, you're giving him. You're, you're still giving him too much credit. It's it's not even. It's more than that. It's not even that he doesn't know because it's not a specialty. Oh, he here's knows. what people yeah, he here's what, what people need to understand. Having a uh, an education or a certification or mm. you know letters after your name does not guarantee that someone's going to have integrity yeah. at all. There you go. Some of the most dishonest fucking people you'll find in the world are some of the most educated, connected people ever. In fact, mm. if you look at all of the economic crises and wars and shit that we've done in mankind, they were all done by highly educated, yeah. you know, wizards uh, that with uh, you know with letters after their name. He, he it doesn't mean he has integrity. Yes, he's a doctor, You're profiteering off of predatory practices. Yeah, he he's a doctor, and what happens with Doctor Oz is because he's a doctor, and I'm sure he's a very. I mean, I know he's a very. I know what he's done. He's a very intelligent doctor in his field. He's he's a brilliant man. But what he's doing now is he's using that to sell shit. Like I sell supplements that are fucking bullshit. Yeah, you know, talking about and green. He got called out too. Like uh, he went to court a couple times and tried to. <laughs> he tried to. He had to like basically defend the fact that like he had magic like in his in his verbiage, like even describing some of the supplements. Like it has this magic effect to it. Yeah, no. He's like, he, what, explain to me the magic. No, I, I, you mean <laughs> it's been fucking ridiculous. There's been investigations uh, into some of his claims, and some organizations have found that like forty six percent of his claims are com- totally misleading or incorrect. So uh, I, here's here's what I really hate. I actually hate people like him more than I hate the fitness professionals and the whatever, you know, snake oil salesmen that don't have a doctor hmm. uh, oh, before yeah. their name because they uh, because they're automatic because it's easier to see that they're full of shit. But when someone like him, who's got like this incredible education and pedigree, because mm-hmm. the guy's he's a he's a, he's uh, a wolf. He's a decorated you know, um, doctor, um, and there's some doctors that like neurosurgeons and like very brilliant, and then they'll come out and they'll say something that's totally false just to make their pockets fat. Well, we know we know how complex the body is. There's so many systems going on, and there's 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 people that are all, we have doctors in all these specific systems because that's how complex the human body is, and there's still so much about the human body that we don't know. So you get somebody who understands a part of the human body on a level higher than like 90% of the population. And so they can take advantage of a majority of the people that don't understand what they're saying. And when they present it in a way that sounds credible because they're using big words and terminology that sounds good, it's hard to, to be able to filter that out. I mean, this is uh, people like Dr. Oz, are a lot of what inspired Mind Pump. Mm. It really was because this is this is what is wrong with the health and fitness industry is it's full of charlatans like this that prey on the average consumer that doesn't know any better. Mm-hmm. And they don't know what to look for. They don't know what to listen for because they don't understand half the verbiage these guys are saying. And because they're credible, because they're on Oprah's show, because they are got a doctor in front of their name, they, they want to believe that what they're saying is true. Mm-hmm. And in reality, it's a bunch of bullshit and it's hard to see that. And that's really what inspired us to do is just to be a filter for people, for guys like no, this. No, it's... Look, I, and you know, it's not like that... For me personally, it's not that I disagree with everything he does. There's things that he says and does where, where you know, he's giving out good information. It's mm-hmm. just that, you know, with his uh, his pedigree and his background, for him to peddle some of the shit that he peddles and says, it's really disheartening. It really pisses me off. I used to train a lot of doctors, and if I brought up Doctor Oz, <laughs> they would get very angry. Yeah, they get angry yeah. because uh, he just there's no integrity there. Mm. Um, and it's you know he's an entertainer. Here's what you need to understand. The man is an entertainer first and a doctor second. How does he make his living? He makes his living entertaining people on a talk show yeah. and selling his his supplements. He does not make a living being a doctor really anymore. So consider that, you know, of course if someone has an education, that's probably a good starting point, but it does not guarantee that they have integrity that they're not going to lie to you. There's another fa- doctor in our industry that we've talked shit about many times. I'm not even going to bring his name up anymore, but also horrible claims and he likes to say well i'm a doctor and that's why i you know what i'm no that doesn't mean you fucking tell the truth dude 
doesn't mean you're not trying to you know rip people off. Well, and and I feel like the the bigger and the more famous they are, the the more likely they are. <laughs> you know what's funny? They actually have now studies to confirm that. Did you know that there's actual? So here's this is what's cool now. I was, uh, I've been reading this book by um, God. What's his name? Michio Michio. What's his name? Kaku or something. I can't remember how to pronounce his name. I think I said his name right. Theoretical physicist, and he's he wrote this book, and I'm reading about all these studies. In the last like 15 years, we've learned more about the brain and how it works than in the previous you know 500 years because of MRI technology and stuff like that. And what they're finding is power. You know, you guys know the term that power corrupts, and absolute power corrupts yeah. absolutely. They're finding that when people have power, it actually changes the structure of their brain and how their brain operates. Oh. That it in, it truly does corrupt people. So when you've got these, you know, you've got this doctor, you've got this politician who starts in this in this particular area or field and they're doing things with integrity and the bigger they get and the more power they get, unless they actively check it, unless they actively have people around them that's whose whose goal and job is to keep them keep their integrity, they actually change and start to view things a little differently. And uh, that's probably what happens to people like Dr. Oz, who was a decorated surg- uh, you know, doctor and now is selling bullshit. And I'm sure if you, you, know, you found Dr. Oz you know, 20 years ago and introduced him to himself now, he'd be saying the same thing. Oh, for sure. It's, it's, it's very, very interesting. But you're right. Like the, the more like celebrities, celebrities live in this vacuum and say this bullshit. And you can't believe that anybody could actually believe in, in that kind of stuff and, and no they do they actually believe in them you know what they're saying is true so right. it's pr- pretty crazy quick commercial break you guys we keep getting asked all the time how can I support the Mind Pump family here's one of the best ways you guys can you guys love that Chimera Coffee that we have Chimera Coffee with a K you go to ChimeraCoffee.com put in the discount code Mind Pump for 10% at the checkout also if you guys want to know how I have this luxurious beard and you want one too go to BigTopBeardCompany.com put in the discount Mind Pump again but this time for 33% off. Also, you guys, if you guys have not tried Ben Greenfield's new bars out, they're fantastic. If you want some, go to bengreenfieldfitness.com forward slash nature bite. Put in the code mind pump and get 10% off. Go check it out. Pablo Sue is asking, do Adam and Sal ever resent Justin oh, for not prioritizing <laughs> his physique considering the nature of the industry? No. <laughs> Our what industry. A, this is this is the one that you want to read first. Yeah. <laughs> no, I don't. Yeah, yeah, you guys respond. No. <laughs> I resent the fuck out of him, dude. Yeah. All, the time. Yeah. all the time. All the time. I give I give Justin shit all the time. Here's the deal with uh, the beauty of Mind Pump is that, and this is I I like that we are so different. We couldn't be more different, all three of us. Uh, yet. Uh, there's a lot of things that we see wrong with the fitness industry that we can come together and discuss. And to be honest, this to me, this show would would not be uh, as successful as it is if uh, all three of us were like each other and had uh, similar views and ideologies and everything. Because mm-hmm. there's going to be a and, and and in case this person doesn't know this already, I'll share with you right now that when we do pulse checks on our audience who the favorite host is fucking Justin wins every goddamn time. Mm-hmm. So from a business standpoint uh, and, and when you look at it like that, uh, Justin being Justin, who he is, is, is better for our business than it, it would be for me to try and mold him into mm-hmm. being more like me or more like Sal. Well, the question, I mean, it, part of it is, is based in some truth, right? In the fact that the, the industry that we're in fitness you know, it, it sells to look a particular way, right? Uh, that's a big selling point. And it's very hard to get people to listen to what you have to say if you don't look uh, a particular way. And this is why you have people like like the guy, I don't even know what his name is, Athlene X or whatever his name is. Um, the guy's got a huge following on, on YouTube. He's a legit physical therapist. And some of the stuff, he, a lot of the stuff he teaches, he's very, very good. But he teaches every video with a shirt off. Every single video, yeah. dude has his shirt off and he's ripped. Why does he do that? Can he teach what he's teaching without it being ripped, without a shirt being off? Of course. But the reason why he does it is our industry uh, has, you know, it, it, people tend to not want to listen to well, you. It's, you just, look a particular it's the way. same reason why I competed. It's the only reason why I competed. I didn't have this like burning desire to get on stage in a fucking, in a bathing suit. I never, I hated that. But I also recognized and knew that 
didn't matter how much knowledge I had, didn't matter how many people's, how many lives I'd changed before that people want to see that you can do that. And they, and it does. And that's what sucks about the industry is that's true. So I get that. And maybe if it was, if Justin was all by himself, this would be a different scenario, but it's that's the beauty of there being three of us is we have that ability that well, we we don't have to conform. Yeah, there's a certain, of course, there's a certain level of uh, you know fitness that your body will reflect because you're living you know what you're preaching. But the difference, uh, there's a pretty wide range of what that can look like. So, um, you know, Adam competed, and so there's times when Adam diets down to the shredded, shredded level, which actually doesn't even represent his health because. His health, uh, people would look at him when he's his most lean and say, oh, he's so healthy and fit. And when in reality, that's probably when he's not, when he's his least healthy and fit because he's so extreme, right? I've gotten shredded to that point as well. I tend to walk around a little leaner because that's the way my body tends to represent, uh, you know, my lifestyle. You can also be heavier and have that same representation. I've worked with, you know, it reminds me of, uh, I was, you know, I was a big MMA fan back in the day. I used to love. Fedor. Yeah, I used to love watching Fedor. Emelianenko uh, fight because he was he wasn't like overweight or anything he wasn't this big fat guy but he was kind of you know chubby compared to like some of his shredded you know ripped you know roided out opponents and then they fight and he'd beat the shit out of them and it was always great to watch because yeah. it doesn't it doesn't tell uh, the whole story so um, it, there's no there's no resentment whatsoever for anything which is hilarious so, right. yeah yeah, no, yeah I'm glad you guys addressed that. Yeah, that is important. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Do you have anything you want to add to that, Justin? I don't know, man. Like, to be honest, I feel like this question is like part of the problem of our industry. And, uh, you know, for me personally, <clears throat> um, I had mentioned this like a long time ago on the show. It's like I don't have any like desire to walk around shredded and, and you know, less than 10 percent or uh, put in the kind of work I know and the discipline that it takes to. Um, constantly look at myself, be, you know, critical of that and, you know, uh, uh, put in those practices in place and, 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 uh, like that's, that's going to consume my entire lifestyle. And, you know, for me, of course my wife's calling me right this second, you know, to check <laughs> up on me. <laughs> uh, you know, for me, it's like, I just, I, I honestly like going through working out, it was all for what I could do and, you know, how much strength I could produce and what kind of movements uh, that would create on the field. And, you know, my body would be a reflection of that as a result of that. And um, I feel like, you know, this, this culture is like it, it, this culture of vanity and this culture of over exaggerating the, the, that, the six pack abs and, and eight pack abs and all these things like, like that's the definition of health. And that's like completely off. And, and we're all missing, uh, you know, the, we're missing the mark with that when that's our entire pursuit of health, wellness, and fitness. And so for me, I'm, pr I'm completely like repelled, uh, to, to being a douchebag. And I'm not going to, you know, you guys are the exception to, you know, incorporating uh, health, wellness, and, and like the mindset of like improving yourself. Like, like for me, like I've always thought of that being the fucking douchebag. And I have not hung out with anybody like that that hasn't been completely self centered and fucking annoying to be around. I'm sorry, dude, but you looking like at yourself constantly in front of a mirror and constantly checking yourself like a fucking girl all day long <laughs> to see if you have like your abs showing and this and that. I'm not interested in that shit. Don't bring that to me, dude. Like, you, like you're trying to tell me that that is a representation of fitness. You can fuck yourself. <laughs> I don't want any of that. They probably do. Now, you know, you know, it, you knowing again. that Justin, do you ever battle though with that knowing like, because the industry is that way, we, we all know that cause we discussed this openly, like how, uh, how, cause that was a struggle for me was like, I didn't really want to compete. I didn't really want to do any of that stuff. I felt compelled. And at that time it was when you and I were going to do the app together. And I thought like, I need to get out there. Yeah. And I feel like, you know, I hate to, I don't want to be the guy who is. I've gone back and forth and I've tried to hustle and like, be like, oh, you know, I could make my physique and my muscles pop and this and that. And like, uh, you know, go through this, this, this program where I'm like going to shred down and cut down. And, you know, I did all that and I, I tried to look the best that I could, you know, look and, and go through the hustle of that. But 
um, I'm just not interested in starving myself. I'm not interested mm. in in being fucking narcissistic and, and walking around through life being obsessed. And no. being obsessed is literally what it takes to constantly be like that. It, 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 if you have a healthy obsession and you're doing it, you know, and you're and you're benefiting your body with nutrients and you're always like checking your health, you know, then that's maybe a bonus to it. But otherwise, honestly, you can't really make an argument to me that that says otherwise. Well, I think it depends on the person, right? Uh, I don't obsess about nutrition. It's not something I obsess about. Uh, that's the way my body it reflects it just well, by the you way. you had an actual condition that, you know, you have to be careful about what you're eating because it upsets, you know, IBS. Like it, it upsets, you that's, know, the culture of your stomach. Yeah. And that's part of it. I mean, it, that's my point. Like it, you're, you can live a very healthy life and you're going to look healthy. And now healthy can look different from person to person. On some people, right. it looks leaner. On other people, it looks not as lean. But health doesn't look like one uh, particular thing. We've just attached the the aesthetic to that. But let me ask you this, Justin: Do you think is part of you because you're such a you're one of the and I'm, we're all the same way? If somebody fucking hammers us enough and tells us to do something enough, we will definitely we'll not do it. Revolt, right? On purpose, right? Yeah, I'll get fatter now as a result of this. <laughs> like, I'm gonna bulk the fuck up. And get fat and be like, I, I'm still awesome. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm not even fat now yeah. and I'm getting this kind of shit. You know, like, <laughs> fine. Yeah. Like, watch when I'm a sumo. Yeah. <laughs> you know, watch what I do then. You did the opposite. Yeah, I just, uh, it's just Pop so Lasko. funny. It's so typical to me, dude. Like, uh, I, well, I, I, I just want to, I just want to like be a megaphone for like, there's, this is such a little small community, which seems really big, but like, if you ask, anybody that's involved in sports or like movement or a c concerned with like joint health or any of that. And, and you ask them like, who's your favorite bodybuilder or who, you know, the who the fuck Joey Schwoll is? Who the fuck is that? Who cares? He doesn't know anything. You know what I mean? Like who the fuck cares about this guy who might have abs? It, like they're not benefiting my life. And you know, I, I might sound like an asshole coming out here and like, you know, call him cause I, I appreciate it. I appreciate what it takes for people to, to do it as a sport, you know? And like, that's your pursuit. But look at your lifestyle. Look at the people around you. Are they fucking happy hanging out with you? Mm. No way, yeah. dude. No <laughs> way. I won't fucking hang out with you. Yeah, You're exactly. annoying. Yeah, that's a good, that's a good point. I, it, from a business standpoint, to be honest with you, it doesn't, I mean, having three dudes that all look the same is actually less effective, I would say. No, it, it, it is less effective. And this is this is not the first time I've addressed this question. I mean, people have asked me this privately before, and I don't even bring it to Justin's attention because I don't think it's worth discussing because <laughs> I'm like, I, I one, I know. And, and I think part of the reason why we are even allowing him to vent right now because I feel like, eh, you know what, it's... It's. I think it's time. I've had enough people that have asked me before that it's like you know what Justin hasn't vocalized this uh, before, and I feel like I wouldn't want I wouldn't want him to be like me no more than I would want uh, myself to be like Sal and vice versa. I mean that's what that's what makes Mind Pump so special is that everybody brings a different perspective to the table, and there's going to be a large amount of people, especially when you're talking when you're talking about tens of thousands or in our case a million downloads we're doing a million downloads a month so there's a fucking lot of people listening and you better fucking believe i'm very well aware that in all those downloads there's thousands of people who don't fucking like me mm. and then think that i'm a douchebag because i fucking yeah. compete and get on stage and i'm bulking up right now and then i get shredded and i have to take fucking underwear pictures I am 100% aware that there's plenty of people that don't fucking like me. The fact that we have polarizing personalities is better for the business, is better for listeners, because there's going to be certain people that are going to appeal to each one of us individually and connect to our personalities and our thought right. process. And that's just my person. My personality is like, that's expected, right? It's expected for you to be this, um, this, this person, this archetype of fitness has to be um, you know, super like shredded, like constantly. And, um, you know, I get that and I get that's per people's perceptions, but like, I don't give a fuck. And that's my personality. Well, so. the, the hard part, and I, and I kind of feel <clears throat> this is the tough part. Like I just recently went through this whole like mobility journey and, you know, part of that for me was I was going to let go of that, the, 
the vanity part. Let go of the look at me, look how ripped I am and the macro counting and all that stuff, which is a, a big part of my personality and character on this show. But I knew what my what my body needed and I knew what I needed to do for my own personal journey. And I didn't give a fuck what everybody else thought. But it kind of sucks because I know I lost a lot of traction and attention on my social media platforms when I was doing that. It didn't appeal to a lot of people. And now that I'm back onto my macro counting and getting buffed and shredded and now all of a sudden I see all this attention on my on my Insta story and everything's up way more than what it was before. So it's a, it's tough. It's tough being in our uh, in our position when it comes to things like that, doing what we want to do for our personal journeys and health and fitness and what makes us happy versus, OK, always having to take into consideration that we're being watched by thousands of people and we're influencing others and thinking about that. It's definitely yeah. there's definitely a, a challenge there for sure. Well, one thing just don't ever feel sorry for any of us. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> God damn it. Like, seriously, like, don't do that. Like, because like I'm so confident and I'm so happy with where I'm at and like, like, don't don't look at that as like something like, Oh God, you know, you look good. Uh. Like <laughs> fuck, dude, fuck off. Like I am, <laughs> I'm so great right now. You know, like this question's hilarious to me, dude. Like, yeah. like I, I have a problem with this or something, yeah. you know, like dude, I'll tell you what, it, you know, the, the, the message has been, and we, we talk a lot about, uh, you know, different people's goals and how to get there and, you know, what the proper method with nutrition and exercise is, and especially when the goals get specific. But at the end of the day, the general theme is that if you are, if you live a healthy life, which is true for you, which uh, with healthy intentions, where it's not about the goal, it's about the process, where every day it's decisions that are made that uh, feed your body uh, properly, that uh, to, to help your body move properly, everything from building strength to building endurance, but also just feeling good, your mental state, your spiritual state. If you do all of those things, your body will have uh, a physical representation that represents what uh, what that health looks like for you. And that, to the average person, is very attractive. But it doesn't always it doesn't look the same from person to person. You need to understand that. And so, some people are going to look some way, and other people look another way. But the way it's going to look when you're really living that that healthy lifestyle, is uh, vibrant. It's the most attractive uh, way that you'll look to most people. Of course, there's people out there who like the extremes, and I get that too, but it's all about health, and nothing is sexier than being healthy, and that's really what it's all about. It's not about a six-pack. Six-packs on some people shows up uh, when they're optimal health. On other people, it doesn't, and it doesn't fucking matter, so... You know, those of you listening who tend to freak out and say, oh, I need to get super, you know, and I, I don't know what I'm doing wrong. And I need to, I've had female clients who were built like, you know, weightlifters who would fret because they didn't look like the bikini girl on stage. And it's like, your body's built differently, but we can make you healthy. And I promise that that will be the best representation of you. Uh, you're going to look the best as a result, but that shouldn't be the goal. The goal is not that. The goal is the process. So I guess that's the, the underlying message. All right. Check it out. If you want to ask us a question that we can answer on an episode like this one, the place to do it is on Instagram. Uh, the page is Mind Pump Media. We all have personal pages. Mine is Mind Pump Sal. Justin is Mind Pump Justin. Adam is Mind Pump Adam. Doug is Mind Pump Doug. And also, go to YouTube and subscribe to Mind Pump TV. We post a new video every single day and give Justin some love. Thank you for listening to Mind Pump. If your goal is to build and shape your body, dramatically improve your health and energy, and maximize your overall performance, check out our discounted RGB Super Bundle at mindpumpmedia.com. The RGB Super Bundle includes MAPS Anabolic, MAPS Performance, and MAPS Aesthetic. Nine months of phased expert exercise programming designed by Sal, Adam, and Justin to systematically transform the way your body looks, feels, and performs. With detailed workout blueprints and over 200 videos, the RGB Super Bundle is like having Sal, Adam, and Justin as your own personal trainers, but at a fraction of the price. The RGB Super Bundle has a full 30-day money-back guarantee, and you can get it now plus other valuable free resources at mindpumpmedia.com. If you enjoy this show, please share the love by leaving us a five-star rating and review on iTunes and by introducing Mind Pump to your friends and family. We thank you for your support, and until next time, this is Mind Pump.